Okay, get over start. Yeah, you're good. Oh. <laughs> well, that's not it either. Uh, how do I get screen sharing? Trisha, it started to, and then you cut it off. Sorry. Do it. Let me know if you see that. Yeah. Um, you're good. Okay. Sorry, everyone. Okay. Go. Who wants? It? Ashley, you 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 have this screen. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You can do it. Okay. Um. Let's literally look at all those names really quick. It's it's April. We're not talking January or February. This is April. Look at all those new names added to our our team. It's amazing. Um, if you are one of the coaches that sponsored these people, well done. Awesome. So Danielle and Jessica, Jennifer, Nicole, Jess, Dawn, Christina, Megan, Jessica, Meredith, Kate, Nicole, Joanne, and David. Well done. Um, welcome to the team. You joined one of the best. Um, this is a great time, as always, it is to, to be a part of us. It's an incredible opportunity right now with this Spring into Health um, Challenge pack that's offered by Beachbody and lots of changes, new programs. So welcome and hope your April is outstanding. Maybe you'll earn a call with Carl Deichler. Um, your first month as a coach, success starters, work for it, help three people and you can get on a call with him and hopefully earn a um, ticket to summit with three months in a row of hitting success club. So welcome to our family. I love that. Um, Okay. And six, March Success Club. Look at that. Looks good too. So Alicia, the girl with the beautiful hair. Look at that. 14. Jennifer, mom of twins, 14. Elite, uh, Ashley, 14. Wow. Go Ash. You're not the retailer. That's awesome. Um, Rebecca, 10. Katie, 10. Julie, 10. Christine, 10. Myself has eight. Shannon, eight. Tawny, eight. Melissa, eight. Dawn, eight. Christy, six. Tina, six, Maria, six, Ramsey, six. He was outstanding at our Super Saturday. His, his message, his story was incredible. Um, Heather, six, Kayla, six, Christy, six, Danielle, six, Carmela, six, and Jennifer, six. Well done, everyone. Um, get in the club. Then your name could go on the board, and we'll have to make a big, huge um, slide for that. So well done. Okay, I don't know why I should have hit presentation mode. You see my ugly background in the back, back there. Okay, so we went to Super Saturday in Jersey, and it was based on personal development rather than a workout. We had our unbelievable um, girl code author, Cara Leva, and these two hotties drove up. Um, Sarah, the girl to the right, is brand new. She brought her three-month-old baby, and she drove up. It's about an hour and a half from where, from where we live. And Hina brought her, um, brand new coach, went to Super Saturday, sold her first challenge pack today. So well done, Sarah. She loved it, spent the day, bought the upgraded ticket, drank champagne with us. Oh, no, she didn't. Sorry, she left a little early. Sorry, she had a baby. Anyway, it was so great to meet her. She's fab. I think she's a great addition to our family. And um, she's on Hina's No Excuse team, and I love it. There is nothing better than having a newbie at a Super Saturday and then um, to catch that total um, vibe and sell a challenge pack today. So awesome. Welcome, Sarah. And then, of course, you go from drinking Shakeology to drinking champagne. So my newbie, Jennifer, um, was at Super Saturday also, literally a coach for a week, came, stayed with us, um, popped some champagne, helped out, actually was there early with me. So um, I was really, really proud to have uh, a newbie, two newbies in our in our team there. Um, our Super Saturday was really a great event. Well done. So I was I was glad to have her there, um, a mom of three, and um, took the time. She works two jobs. Took the time out of her entire Saturday. Again, we're not around the block. We we drive a little bit up to North Jersey, and I was so proud to have her with us. We got champagne and um, met that author, Cara Leva. So it was pretty good. So. Um, those are my shout outs. I'm very proud of my girls, my fearless family. So that being said, I am going to just share the slide. And then who wants to introduce Maureen? You want to just shout out Lana real quick? Sure, I will. Absolutely. And may I just say, this is not the first call 
that she's doing. This is the second or third. I apologize. Third. Okay. Th there is no reason that you guys can't take that lead that Lana has done for us on her Monday night and shared her knowledge. And um, I loved hearing her story last time. So I'm looking forward to, to it tonight, but she's, she, when you train, when you teach, you learn. I really believe that I say that all the time. If you have something to share, I mean, if you can give it in a teaching way and share what you, what you know, it comes back to you. I promise you. Um, you'll be able to, to, um, it, it does come back to you. So go ahead, Mom. Sorry. Wait, and maybe it is only the second. Why did I think it was the third? Anyway, um, Lana is doing awesome. Um, she presented at, she was one of the speakers. We did like a VIP session at our Buffalo Super Saturday. And the beginning part was for like, I'm going to call it, it was like a, a glorified PD, like for all the VIP people. Um, and Lana was, was one of the speakers, which is pretty freaking amazing considering that she is seriously introverted. Um, when she first started out with me, she was only going to drink Shakeology and not going to exercise because she wasn't an exerciser and now is literally kicking ass and taking names. Her Facebook like page has literally blown up. Um, she's doing amazing things. I'm very, very excited for her. So here's Lana. Lana, hold on, honey. Let me just stop sharing. So you have okay. the floor. Okay. Hi, thanks for the intro, Mo. <laughs> you always give me an amazing intro. <laughs> so it's my second team call. Um, so the first one, I was super nervous and I had no agenda. So I'm a lot more organized today and I actually have a PowerPoint. So um, hopefully I can figure out how to screen share because that would kind of make it or break it for me, I guess. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so my topic today is um, tips for preventing burnout and practicing self-care. And the reason why I picked this um, topic is it really kind of comes from my background as a mental health therapist. Um, a lot of times we as therapists um, are warned to watch out for those signs of burnout and we kind of like to pretend that we are immune to them. Um, and we're not. And usually we find out about that when it's a little too late and we are burnt out and we are stressed out. So I kind of feel like there's a little bit of a parallel process to coaching when it comes to feeling burnt out because um, coaches, we as coaches are in that helping profession as well. Um, so I wanted to, um, I mean, this is definitely been more of a, of a teaching presentation because I want to give you some information about um, what burnout is, how to recognize signs of burnout before it's too late, um, and then give you some um, self-care tips and some suggestions on what you can do to help prevent that from happening. So first, what is burnout? So burnout is a state of emotional, mental, and physical exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. So again, stuff could be happening to us and we have no idea that we are kind of going towards that road of feeling burned out. Um, it occurs when you feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained, and unable to meet constant demands, which is very common in helping professions. Um, as the stress continues, you begin to lose interest, motivation that led you to take on a certain role in the first place. So I think this is a really important point when it comes to coaching um, because you can't really get to that point as a coach because that leads to you losing your passion for this work. And I think that's why a lot of the coaches quit when they get to the point of, of losing that fire and losing their passion because um, you know, they, might not, they might be giving too much and not getting anything in return. Um, burnout then in turn reduces your productivity, saps your energy, leaving you feeling increasingly helpless, hopeless, cynical, and resentful. So it might turn something that you had um, 
tremendous passion for and completely turn it around for you. Um, so, and eventually you get to the point where you may feel like you just have nothing more to give. So these are some of the symptoms that you should be watching out for to recognize if you're feeling burnt out. So there's physical symptoms, emotional symptoms, and behavioral symptoms. Um, so some of the physical symptoms are feeling tired and drained most of the time frequent headaches or muscle pain, lowered immunity or getting sick a lot more than you normally do, changes in appetite or sleep habits, emotional signs and symptoms, sense of failure or self-doubt, detachment, feeling alone in the world, increasingly cynical and negative outlook, feeling helpless, trapped and defeated, loss of motivation and decreased satisfaction and sense of accomplishment. So I think the emotional ones are the ones that I really wanted to focus on because I think those are the ones that we really feel the most as coaches. And then some of the behavioral signs are withdrawing from responsibilities. So maybe we stop doing those vital behaviors, um, taking your frustrations out on others. Um, so we tend to kind of take our frustrations out on the people that are the closest to us. Um, isolating yourself from others, so withdrawing from our support systems, and using food, drugs, or alcohol to cope. So I know that emotional eating is a struggle for a lot of people. So um, if you're feeling stressed out, if you're feeling burned out, you might be going back to using um, emotional eating as a crutch and as a coping skill. So who is most prone to burning out? <laughs> um, Again, people in helping professions, ministers, teachers, health workers, law enforcement, and other jobs that entail directly helping other people. And then certain personality types. And when I was writing out those personality types, that's me, that describes me. And I think that describes a lot of us coaches. So it's people who prefer to be in control of their environments. I know personally for me, I'm a perfectionist. So when I lose control, <laughs> it's a bad thing. It makes me feel incredibly anxious and it makes me feel stressed out. Um, people who take on too many responsibilities. Um, as moms, I think we tend to take on more responsibilities than we should or we think we can handle. Um, I think as coaches, we also kind of tend to take on responsibilities for our challengers' successes or lack of success, um, and people who are available to everyone and take on everybody else's problems, um, which again, I think as coaches, we, um, we tend to be those people. We tend to make ourselves available to our challengers, um, available to our downlines, so we definitely put ourselves out there. So, how do you prevent those signs of, or how do you prevent the burnout? Um, prioritizing your needs. This is actually something that um, uh, I actually went live on this um, on my page earlier today, I'm just kind of talking about self care. Um, but when it comes to prioritizing your needs, um, separating it into these three things. The first one is your physical space. So decluttering your physical space. Um, if you ever notice, like if your house is really messy, if you're a cook and your kitchen is really messy, if your bedroom is a mess and you have trouble, you know, falling or staying asleep, it's because your space is cluttered. And when your physical space is cluttered, I think it makes you feel um, really anxious and it adds to you feeling stressed out. So um, number one is take a look at your physical space and try to declutter it as much as you can. And, you know, you might not be able to declutter your entire house, um, especially if you have small kids, but if you have those um, spaces that are kind of sacred to you, um, those spaces where you spend the most of your time at, uh, focus on those first. So for me, actually, um, something that I did is I focused on my bedroom. My bedroom used to be a mess. I was that person who, you know, has that chair that has all the clothes on it, um, you know, that doesn't go in the hamper. <laughs> um, 
and they were all over my dresser. They were all over my chair. And I just kind of, and I was actually reading a book. It's called um, Be That Girl. Um, so if you haven't read it yet, definitely recommend it because she talks about um, kind of getting your life in order in that book. And that was one of the things she talked about is really taking your bedroom as that first space to, to declutter and really make it kind of your sanctuary. And, um, and that's what I did. I followed her suggestions and, you know, my dresser now has things on it that like I have an oil diffuser on it. I have a salt lamp on it, pictures of my kids and my husband. I have a plant. Um, so it's, almost like a serene place for me now. So whenever I feel stressed out, that's the first place that I kind of go and look at and it helps me calm down. Um, so definitely kind of um, think about what's the one place in my house that, um, that I kind of need to make mine where I can go when I'm feeling stressed out. And then mental space. So um, expressing your thoughts and feelings. And if you can't talk them out, definitely write them out. So um, I'm a big believer in journaling. Um, I started journaling in the beginning of this year and I hardly miss a day. It's something that I used to do when I was younger and then, you know, life kind of happened and I stopped um, and I restarted again and it's been amazing. It's the first thing I do every morning when I wake up, um, kind of let everything out that's on my mind and um, it just kind of starts my day off on the on the right note and then the last thing is time so your time is really important and your time is really valuable um, so it's up to you to decide what is really important and how you're going to prioritize your time and then learn how to say no to the rest so again, kind of ask yourself, when I'm saying yes to all these things that people are asking me to do, um, can, can I really handle it? Um, so again, a lot of times we kind of tend to take on too much. We think we can handle more than we really can. So, um, so prioritize and decide what is really important. Um, and I love this, this quote, um, it's not selfish to refill your own cup. Um, so that you can pour onto others. It's not just a luxury, it's essential because you, you cannot pour from an empty cup. So here are some self-care tips. And some of them um, I actually took right from the stuff that I used to teach to my clients when I was a therapist. Um, the first one is stop overthinking. <laughs> Accept what is and stop pushing. So um, accept your reality. You know, some days you will have days where things don't go as planned and you can't control it. There's nothing you can do about it. It is what it is. Be still and meditate. I think it's really, really important to find a time in your day um, where you can just give yourself, even if it's like five minutes, um, give yourself some time to just just be still and sit in silence. You don't even have to do like guided meditation or anything, um, but just like set your timer for five minutes and just kind of clear your mind and be still and, and don't worry about everything else that you have to do and everything else that is on your mind. Um, stop comparing yourself to others. Um, I know that's something that is talked about all the time. Um, so I'm not going to repeat myself when it comes to that, but um, we, we stress ourselves out when we compare ourselves to others. So, so just, just focus on yourself. Um, take actions that scare you. So um, again, it's something that I've been challenging myself to do, and I'm finding that the more I do the things that scare me, the less scary they become. So even my experience of doing a call, I think it was last month or maybe a month and a half ago, um, I was a nervous rock <laughs> when I did that call. Um, and today, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel as scary. Um, and, and know your strengths. Know what you're good at. Um, so start to recognize your strengths. Um, you know, when, when people give you a compliment, um, 
pay attention to what people are complimenting you on because they're not just complimenting you for the heck of it. Um, usually, you know, when people give you a compliment, it's because they mean it. So if you can't see your own strength, um, usually people will point it out to you. So pay attention to what people are saying. Surround yourself with positive people. I don't really think I need to say a whole lot about that. Um, forgive others and forgive yourself. So um, it's definitely, I think for us, you know, we, we can forgive others, but we have a harder time forgiving ourselves for the mistakes that we make. Um, so forgive yourself, you know, be just as kind to yourself as you would be to the next person. Um, if somebody else deserves your forgiveness, you deserve your own forgiveness too. Embrace your imperfections. None of us are perfect. Um, people might put out a facade that they are, but they're not. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. So embrace your imperfections. They are what make you unique. Um, allow yourself to feel whatever you're feeling. Don't stuff down your feelings. Don't push your feelings out. Um, again, that's where I think journaling comes in handy too, because if you, you might not be at that point where you can talk about your feelings openly, but you can, um, you can write them down and allow yourself to feel whatever it is that you're feeling. Even if it's a negative emotion, um, it's okay. We're, again, we're human, we're not perfect. We're allowed to feel whatever it is that you're feeling. Um, and read to expand your mind. Personal development has been um, really a lifesaver for me. I think that I wouldn't have made all the changes that I made in the last year if it wasn't for um, some of the personal development books that I've read. So I think to me, it really has been the most important vital behavior um, that's gotten me as far as it did. And then the last thing I have is just um, a quote from The Seed, so one of my favorite personal development books. Um, but there, and it totally jumped out at me um, even before I planned this whole presentation. Um, but I, I thought back to it as I was putting my slides together. Um, so he mentions in the book, um, we don't get burnt out because of what we do. We get burnt out because we forget why we do it purpose keeps you fresh. So whenever you are feeling burnt out as a result of coaching, um, take a step back and remind yourself of your why. And again, remind yourself of your purpose. Why are you doing this? Um, and I think that it will kind of help you rebalance your thinking too. So that's my presentation. I hope that was helpful. Thank you, Anna. That was so helpful. I'm so glad to see that everyone's house is a mess. <laughs> because I'm like, you described me perfectly because when it, like, it gets so cluttered that you're just like, I'm going to sit on the couch today. And you're like, what am I doing? I know I have to do all this stuff, but you like, you can't do anything because everything's such a mess. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, good, all right. But one thing that really did help me was um, organizing my closet. And I literally got rid of like, I would say about two thirds of stuff. And I was just holding on to things. Like I had dresses from like my first summit five years ago that was still in my closet. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not gonna wear this to another summit. Like why am I keeping these things? And just like, I just had so much stuff. And then I got rid of like two thirds of it. And I was like, ah. Oh, I can like breathe in here. You can like see everything. So that was like a huge helper to me to like focus on my closet. And I just took like one night to do it while the kids were in bed. And that has helped me tremendously. Cause you know, when you go in your closet and you're like, I don't even know what to do because everything's a disaster area and I don't know, you know, so that was super helpful to me. And then another thing I wanted to add about the burnout is especially with coaching Try not to be all or nothing. And it's hard, especially if you are like type A or you're, like you said, like you're a perfectionist or you're just, you have that drive because I've seen so many coaches come and go and up and down and back and forth and just so frustrating because it's like, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. It can be just 
you, we want Beach Buddy to fit into your lifestyle. I don't want it to take over your lifestyle. I don't want you like on your phone every waking moment of every day answering every message as it comes in. And it's hard because I know that you, it's exciting and you want to help people and you generally have the heart to you know, have these conversations with people about their why and, and, and all this stuff. But if you let it get to the point where it is all or nothing and you are so consumed with it in a year, you're just going to be like, I'm done. I, I, I didn't hit the goals I wanted to do. I didn't. So try not to be all or nothing. Try to fit it in, but still try to have a life while you're building your business, while you have all these goals and dreams, because the, the coaches that I have seen that are still here, that have been here for three, four, five years are the coaches that have done that. And I've had so many people come and go and just, if you, I did it in the beginning, I was, you know, that's my personality type. I'm very red. If you do any of the color codes, I'm red in every single thing that comes up. But um, I did it in the beginning and I would work, you know, I, I couldn't work during the day because I was a hairdresser. So at night, I would stay up like hours and hours and hours. And Jose would come home from being a cop. And it would be like 4 o'clock in the morning. And I'd be like, hi. And on the computer, he's like, what, what, are you, what are you doing? Who are you talking to? And I'm like, I'm just talking to my friends. You know, um, and it did. It got to the point where you hit a burnout. And you're like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to host team calls. I'm not going to I'm not gonna add new coaches. I just feel like, I, you know, you just get into that, such a mental place. So. I mean, all of your tips were so spot on about everything. And then with the business, just like, you know, take it one day at a time. Don't try to just, you know, watch every YouTube video in one day and watch every team call and try every training and just kind of like figure it out as you go. Anybody have any questions for Lana or anything they want to add? I do, Lana and Stina. That was a really good call. I really appreciated it. Thank you. Um, so my, I guess, question to you is, so I'm, I, when you were describing burnt out, I was like, oh, that's exactly how I feel, you know? Um, and it's like, I keep trying to get back, but I, then I, I keep going right back to those feelings of like exactly what you were describing. So my question to you is once, you've gotten to the point of burnout because you were giving us like ways to avoid burnout once you've already gotten there how do you recommend yourself in um i know you said remembering your why um but do you have any other pointers of like how to ease your way back in because sometimes i look at everything that's so overwhelming that i don't know how to get myself back to doing what i was doing if that makes sense it does make sense and i've definitely i've been there um I've been there as a therapist and I've been there as a coach. Um, and I think that it was when I got to the point of being there as a coach is when I actually had the idea of doing this, of doing this call. Um, for me, it was really just taking, kind of taking a step back um, and just focusing on just picking one area that felt the easiest to kind of fix at the time and just focusing on that because Again, it kind of goes back to if you try to fix it all at the same time, like Ashley said, you're just going to sit on the couch and be like, nope, I'm not doing any of it. Um, so just picking, picking one thing that feels the most doable at the moment and going with that, you know, that helps. Yeah, it does help. I, I think I appreciate that answer because I think you're right. If I'm like, all right, well, it's Monday. I'm going to go all in. And I want to go all back in. You know, I want to do it. But then it's like, you know, that, that, those feelings of being burned out to three quickly. Mm -hmm. Then you're all out again. Yeah. And I think putting the focus back on yourself, too, is really important. Um, because, again, I think we get burned out when we, when we focus on everybody else and we empty our cup. <laughs> So putting the focus back on, on yourself and, and starting to do some of those self-care things, um, even if it is just something small every day, it, it starts adding up. Yep, you're right, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, and I, th I think, Dana, too, I think to get kind of like a quick win under your belt, like, like do the things that make you happy, you know, like do – your invites or whatever it is, or even just get your workouts in, just do like, like Lana said, there's just like a small thing every day. And then you kind of like, 
ease back into it. Because I, I mean, I've done it. I've been in burnout phase a lot. And I'm the same way. I'm like, yep, Monday, I'm going all in. I'm going to sit on the computer for eight hours. And you're like, mm, okay, I ain't really getting done. But yeah, I think the small, small things will help grow into the bigger things. Yeah, I think so too. Because I you forget, like in the beginning, you didn't start doing everything on day one. You know, you <laughs> gradually step to what you became. So it's, yeah, you're gonna go back in. You can't do it all at once again. You gotta kind of build your way back up slowly. Yeah, and and like she said, focus on you, like the things that make you happy. You know, like you know, um, what what was the girl who did the the joy setting? Um, I can't think of her name. She did the joy setting call or or presentation, like focus on the things that, you know, bring you joy in this business, because if you just focus on everything, you're just going to hate it, you know? I think it was like leadership, the one girl, I can't remember her name. I know what you're talking about. Um, I talked about it once on a call. <laughs> 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 oh, God. See, also come on, here it goes. <laughs> You know, something that I was thinking about just recently, um, because I, I mean, I'm, my business is different now than it was in 2013 and 2014 and 2015 and 2016. And the thing is, and I feel like I was putting pressure on myself so much to go back to what I was doing, but I can't because my life overall is different now. Um, and I feel like it's like Lana said, it, for me, it was, why are you doing this? Like, why are you doing this? Because every time I try to not try, I'm, I've never really actually tried to quit. Um, but every time that I have, like, I've never really gotten that far, but like every time that I'm like, I'm done, I'm not doing this anymore. Like something has reeled me back in, you know, like, or some things like a lot. And so obviously this is my purpose is to, to help other people. Um, so instead of putting the pressure on myself to do what I was doing before, I'm trying something totally different to help me get organized and like do things differently than I was before, because I feel like, like, okay, Ashley, you even said it, Dana, you were saying it. I get to Monday and I'm like, okay, I'm going all in. And I feel like we're all doing the definition of, ins of insanity, which is doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, but we're expecting some sort of like miraculous result and it's just not going to happen. So I, I found that like just doing something differently than I did before is, is actually helping me to be more organized. I feel like I can tackle things. It doesn't feel burdensome to me. Um, and the goals that I have like for my power hour are based off of like my big goal. So like kind of like broken down, like what is that reverse engineer stuff? So I just, I think it's true. I think, I mean, you have another baby, Ashley. You have another baby, Dana. Your life is totally different. I have a lot of there. I mean, I don't have a new baby or anything, but there was a lot of changes that happened in my life. And I think we all are trying to like go back to this thing, like in doing something, but we're all different. Like we all grow, we all change, we all become different. And in order to get out of the burnout, try something different than you were doing before. You know, take care by taking care of yourself. I love Lana, my bedroom is horrific it is literally piles and baskets of clean clothes everywhere um and i don't i do i don't know why i do it because every time i walk into my bedroom i get so annoyed but i love how you were talking about make that like your your sacred place because really that is the only place that i could say is my own because nowhere else in this house is just my not even the bathroom so um I love that. And that's something that's been like weighing on me that I'm like, I just want to get that organized. Like that's the one room that I have, like, I don't give a crap about any other room in the house. Like obviously we clean up the, the bathroom's clean. The kitchen's clean. Everything else is like cluttered all around. I want my bedroom and I feel like that will make such a, such a significant difference. You know, it just, it will. And I, I love that you brought that up because that's something that I've been thinking about. 
and you just saying it like solidifies that that's what needs to happen. And it will, and it will totally make you like your mood just changes. Like when I wake up in the morning and I look at my dresser and I like, I just, I love it. And I really do feel like it helps me sleep better. Like having a clean and organized bedroom helps me fall asleep easier (laughs) because I'm not thinking about it. Like I'm not looking at this mess that's right next to my bed. (laughs) Right. And that's, I, th- I think, sure, you're going, like, I'm going into my bedroom and it's, there's piles and there's piles over there and there's piles in that corner. So, yeah, I, I think it's, I think you're right. So, thank you. I, I, this was very helpful and really just a reminder of how much we don't realize that we overdo it and what it does to ourselves, you know, so I appreciate it. All right, well, who's going to go clean, clean the room today? Uh, I, am. <laughs> I think absolutely right, because I know, like, when I walk in my house in the garage, I walk into my kitchen, and on the rare occasions that I walk into a spotless kitchen, it's, like, it feels so calming and good, and then the days that I walk in and it looks like a bomb went off because breakfast is still on the table, like, <laughs> you can feel the anxiety as soon as you walk in the house. It's like, it's... it's like your shoulders are up, you're tense and this, but if you walk in and it like smells nice and the table's clear and it's just like, just like so much less stress, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Maureen, thank you for saying um, to kind of just like accept where you are and just start over. Because I think that's a lot of things, especially us who've been in it for a long time and like, you're right. Like I, my life was totally different five years ago and I just have to like accept like okay it's different and just do it different from here stop like don't try to do what you did then or don't try to be who you were then just just it's okay just start where you are so that was like pretty eye-opening for me I'm just like oh yeah why do I keep on doing this myself and you're like every week you're and then by Wednesday you're like eh, what did I do today uh, I don't know then it's Friday and then it's crazy weekend with the kids and then back to Monday again I literally just thought about that because I was, your face was the first one that I saw. And I'm like, because I've been doing it too. I'm like, you got to go back. You got to do what you were doing before because that's how you were successful. You got to go back to doing that stuff like you were doing because that's when you were successful. But I can't go back to there because that's not who I am anymore. Like I'm different. But it's hard to accept that, you know, and like you need, you're going to need to keep reminding yourself of that, Ashley, you know, like every week you're going to remind yourself, Oh, but I'm not who I was two years ago. And And that's okay. Right. I have to train myself to keep saying it too, because it's hard to accept that you can't or that things are different, you know, like that you have to do it differently. Yeah. Right, but maybe that's our problem. We're not doing it differently. We're trying to yeah. do the same thing over and over, and you're like, exactly. Oh, it's Thursday. What, what did I do since Monday? I don't know. Yeah, we have to figure out how it works now. Yeah. But, I mean, Shalene is very big on, on organizing and, um, you know, getting everything in your life in order in order to be successful. And when we went to her seminar in, in California in January, um, because she was talking about hiring um, a virtual assistant and she was like, you want to hire a virtual assistant to do all your stuff and all your recognition and all whatever you do for your business on lunch. She's like, you have a Dropbox full of everything that you need done. And I'm like, a Dropbox? You should see my desktop. It's like full of like files and here. She's like, how are you going to have somebody help you and you're not even organized? And I was like, I need somebody to help me because I don't have time to do any of this stuff because my stuff is all over the place. And she's like, you have to get organized. You have to know where everything is and, and plan out your day and know where you are. She's like, you, it is so freeing once you're organized because you can just operate so much better. Like you don't have to think about the sink full of dishes that you left the night before when you wake up, you're just already done. So just, she's very big on creating those new habits of, you know, getting your life in order in your closet and your drawer, everything in your life. You, you know, she has that, that planner, plan out your day. So it's, it's, I mean, I'm not organized, but yeah, getting to that point is the challenge. Right, right. <laughs> I know, but it's just, and then one day happens of life and you throw that pile there again and there it is again because you didn't get to organize it. 
<laughs> it only takes one day of life. Terrible, terrible cycle we're in, right? You clean so. your room, then one morning you have to change 10 times because you feel <laughs> like you look bad and everything, and then there's that chair again. It's just what happens. So one of the suggestions I have is <laughs> Thank to... You. Uh, yes, step in professional, help us. <laughs> do it when you're thinking about it. Yes. Because that's what I did. Like I read that chapter and it, I swear it was like 1030 at night because I was reading before bed and I finished that chapter and I looked over at my dresser and I was like, I'm getting up and I'm doing it. Like I'm doing it now because if I don't get it done now, I'm just going to keep thinking about it and it's not going to get done. And that's what I did. And my husband came upstairs and was like, wow, the room is really clean. <laughs> yes. Now I can go to sleep. Thank you. I've worked on an hour and a half. Thanks. <laughs> don't mess it up if i see your sock on the floor it's going to be world war three in this house just like <laughs> well i don't care about his side <laughs> i just care about mine <laughs> oh my god is anybody like super organized like your house is done your lunch is put away like you guys have <laughs> everybody's like oh lisa okay come on lisa tell us your tricks i saw your hand go up i just moved so everything is freshly unpacked and organized <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. all right so what are your art do you, do you stay organized or are you like i will let you know i'm on day three <laughs> <laughs> listen i mean you, you made it two more days than i have so that's good <laughs> it's my goal to stay organized so that i could stay on top of things awesome yes anybody else anybody like super organized no 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 no. <laughs> okay. I'm, Isn't it so okay, funny? I'm, all, I'm, I'm all the same team and the same call at the same time because we're all the same way. Yeah. <laughs> team hot mess. That's yes. what that should be our team name. <laughs> team, don't wash your hair for five days. How about that? Team clutter. <laughs> yes, and clutter. You want to see my floor? It's shredded with a uh, notebook paper from Grace. <laughs> It's very validating, though, at the same time, because um, Melissa Stanton did um, her presentation at, at Super Saturday, well, Super Friday, was about, like, really just being authentic and open and honest, and, like, she posts all her good or bad or whatever, and I feel like sometimes that's what happens, or, like, you see pictures of people in their houses, and it's like, like I, whenever I see a picture of somebody in their house, I'm always like, oh God, mine doesn't even look like that. Like, I, I, first of all, I don't know one friggin' thing about decorating. So there's not a whole lot of stuff on our walls because I just don't even know what to do. There's toys, there's Minnie Mouse, uh, a pop gun, balls, matchbox cars. Like that's what I'm looking at right now. I mean, that's my life. And I'm like, I could never take pictures. Like, I couldn't because I would be like, mm, yeah, there, that's, yeah, that's good. And then I look at pictures from like when she was one and there wasn't a Sammy and, I, and things were so different then. Right? It was cleaner, yeah. Or yeah. like less cluttered, but then like with more children, another child comes more stuff. And yeah, embrace it, right? One day it won't be there. And then we we'll like throwing cars on the floor so we feel like our house is full. <laughs> Yes, I'll tell you what. It's true that you I say that though. Dolls on the floor. <laughs> even even at the playground today, when they're like, to, the fir this is like the first time, the past couple of times that we went to the playground, that they played on their own. And I don't know if it's because they know I still can't like run and like chase after them, but they both played on obviously except for the swings because they still need a little help with that. But like they played on their own, and I was just standing there, and I was like. Pretty soon, I, they're, I'm not even going to be coming with them to the park because they're going to be like, peace out, mom. So it's true. And you're going to be like, no, I'm coming. I'm sitting I'm, on the bench. I'll yeah. Go. I'm going to follow you all around. Like, Sammy was like, well, when do I get to go to the park? Like, when I'm six? And I'm like, no. And he's like, 10. And I'm like, no. Maybe 18. <laughs> <laughs> I was friggin' four and I was across the street at the playground by myself. Yeah. He's like, I can't when I'm 10. No. No, I'm coming. Oh, that's right. Don't worry, because once the kids all leave, you'll just keep getting puppies like me, and then you're 
beautiful sitting room that even the grown kids aren't allowed to sit in. We'll just the floor will just be covered with puppy toys. <laughs> oh, the last call at my house was clean and organized was the day before I got hit with morning sick in the morning. Good run. Good run. One child, it was kind of easy, but a downward spot instead. Look at that. Look at that patootie. Oh my God, she's so cute. She's up. She's eating spaghetti and turkey right now. It's found turkey. She's so cute. <laughs> Right. She looks like she's teething. Is she teething? So, yeah. Because <laughs> she's like, oh my gosh, she's so cute. Yes, she's cranky at night and she's got to run away. So I think she's finally getting some teeth. So, what did you guys think of the new workouts that are coming out? And I'm excited. I think, um, I, first of all, well, I, I have to be honest. I do not like shift. I do not like the name because I feel like it's, he's saying shit something like that's <laughs> what, shift shop. It is right? shift, ship shop, shift ship. shop. Yeah. I was like, did he just say shit? <laughs> yeah. The name's weird. That's what it sounds like to me. I, I know, like, I realize, like, it's shifting your focus, which is so important. But I was like, I can't even, say, like, I can't say it right. So I probably won't be going live saying, get shift shop, because I'm going to end up saying shit shop, and that's not going to be great. But I am really excited to be able to try it at Punta Cana, not going to lie. Yes. I'm it's very like excited for that. Workout, Maureen. It seems like right up your alley. I know. Well, I, well guess what? <laughs> Guess I'm not going to be really doing that because we're six and a half weeks in and this stupid piece of shit ankle is still sore. <laughs> I can't. I can't. What about the Leandro one? I think he's hysterical and it kind of looks a little bit silly, but mm -hmm. at the same time, but I think there are that people that... I think that that was kind of like make it like Richard Simmons ish kind of. Yeah, but it's oh. kind of, I feel like, mocking the people that are like doing it though, in a way. I'm excited. I don't know. I felt like it looked like stereotyping or something. I didn't. I, I felt like people fools joke. Yeah, but, but I think it was to let people who need that see somebody who's not fit do it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, like, but there wasn't at all a mix like that anyone else would be interested in it. Right. Well, that, well um, right. Because people who are going to do shift shop are not going to do no. you versus two, whatever. No, <laughs> they're not. Good. You know what I mean? So I think it, it's very like niche specific. Yeah. But I think there's a market for it. I think, I think it'll do well if, if possibly. Somebody I can't tell you how many times though I've had customers say, I really wish that there was somebody my size doing yeah. it. Because even the modifiers are not, like, right. well, Kat, excluding Kat, Kat, yeah, but Kat's not even, a re she's a fucking professional modifier, so. Yeah, but I, I didn't know that for a long time, you know. But, yes, I think, but I feel like she looks more like how normal, I, I like, that's how most people sort yeah. of look on an average. Right. But, like, for those people, like, I can't tell you how many times somebody would say to me, I, yeah. I wish there was somebody my yeah. size. Yeah. Because then I, I feel like it's a little bit. Go ahead. I said I I'll agree on that. Yeah, speak up, Michelle, because you're um, one of the people who've said it. I'm looking forward to it. My ankle's been jacked up since January 5th. And I like when I was doing country heat with my sister yesterday, She's like, even there's nobody of any diversity. I said, the modifier is a little. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be good for people, you know, to say, you know, people that need it or look, you know, we're looking for somebody who's like them. Yeah, um, I was just afraid people would be insulted, you know, like find it right. insulting. That, like but, that there wasn't but I, anyone. But I, I think that they think that like 21 Day Fix is insulting because nobody yeah. Like everybody's a size two, so they're like right. they can't see themselves in it. You know what I mean? So to kind of like get them into it, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, I see your point. Yeah. I mean, I know a few people, well, actually, a lot of my family who they stray away from anything I have to say because they can't relate to it. But I can see, like, my aunt being like, oh, I can do this because everybody on there seems to be at my ability and my size. Isn't that weird that people won't, won't do it unless they see somebody like them? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Instead of being, like, motivated by fit people, you're like, well, I can't do that. Like, it's such a, a mental thing. But think about it. Even, like, with coaches, like – Think about like even like those top coaches. It's like I can't ever be that. Like I'm not gonna be there. And I'll tell you, the first time I was doing mine, I was like, "What the freak?" These people, like when I was doing insanity, which I realize is really ridiculous anyway. But I was like, "These people are all fit. And I'm gonna die. Like I'm gonna die in my living room." And these people are like, "But you know what? They were sweating too and like dying. So it was kind of like we're all dying together." But there aren't people like even any of the workouts that have a modifier, their modifier is not somebody that I would feel like okay. would be drawn to a modifier. So I, and part of me feels like not I'm smaller. So maybe I would think that's offensive because they're people that are a bigger size than me. Like, I don't, I, I, I don't want to be offensive in the way I'm saying this, but it's people that are a bigger size than me. But I think it's really going to appeal to the people that are a little bit bigger in size and are not able to do the 21 day fix because I think that we forget when you are, when you're heavier, when you have a lot more like weight on your body, it's hard to do that stuff, even if there is a modifier. And I think when you're smaller, you take that stuff for granted. And it's helped me to open my eyes with Nick, like, and he's not around right now. So I feel like he, he obviously is bigger. I mean, he has talked about his weight and it's, I can see his struggle and it's not because he doesn't want to, it's because it's harder for him to do that stuff because he is a bigger person right. and it's, it's harder, like it's harder to breathe for him. And that's why he wouldn't like doing workouts with me because I can, my fitness level and his are obviously different, but it's because he couldn't do that stuff that way. Right. Yeah. I think it's going to be a very good onboarding for the people that need it and a great, you know, injuries and, and just something easy. And, it, and, I, and then, then I also think it's really cool that Beachbody even saw that or saw this happening and, and created something for that so even if it is kind of cheesy which I, I talked to Nina uh, um, who's one of the cast yeah members in it who's talking Trisha Trisha like, but I don't Trisha talking I'm telling you, she had 25 <laughs> glasses of wine <laughs> I love her. She's going to get Everyone so upset now because her internet is getting wonky. Yep. Nina said that she would do a call and possibly get a couple of the other girls on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dana, she, she lost the connection. What did you say that Nina would get on the call? She would do a call and try and get a couple of the other cast members to hop on um, and just kind of explain the reasoning behind the program, who they're hoping to uh, get with it, and um, just kind of like the background of it. And, yeah, and, uh, yeah, that, that, that would be great. I know Mick, Mickey Fernandez is in it also, and she talked about it in the wall, the, the Five Star Boat group, and she's like super pumped about it. And she's not really, I mean, she had weight to lose, but I wouldn't really categorize, categorize as a, like a plus size quote, but she, really spoke highly of it and is really excited about it so uh. i think it's a good program i think not only size wise but i think the music is, will get like a you know 40 50 year old crowd and and i think it does look a little hokey and cheesy but i think that might actually be a draw factor like think about like sweating for the oldies and, and things yeah like that. yeah that's what they were saying like richard simmons yeah but also, though, think about ability levels. Like, I have serious medical issues, and there's no way in hell I'm going to do whatever the hell that shift thing is. <laughs> right. Yeah. Most of us won't <laughs> for a while. <laughs> Except probably Dawn. Dawn would probably. Once my ankle is done, I am all balls to the wall with that shit. Yeah. 
for the shit shot. I like shot. insanity a lot, so I would probably like it again. I just have I'll to try it. There. Ashley, did you just say that I'm going to do that one? Yeah. Mm. No. Yes, she will. <laughs> no. Don't you like the intensity? She's like, mm, no. <laughs> I like Florida Force. No, I never did Insanity. Never did T25. Never did any of that. Mm-mm. Well, listen, you are stepping out of your comfort zone, Miss, Miss Yankee, so maybe you will. <laughs> you think it's going to be so with that move? <laughs> it's like 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, you're going to call me Yankee? I'm like, whatever. <laughs> now, are they calling you Yankee as a northerner or as a Yankee fan? Like, not because I'm from Jersey and New York. Not that I'm like. So, not as a compliment uh, that you're a Yankee fan. No, like, no, I don't think no, like Yankee. you're a Yankee. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, yeah. it was, they were cute about it. They were really cute about it. Pizza at Van Gogh. I'm like, ooh, I like that one better. <laughs> That's like, what I thought maybe for the art teacher. I, yeah. I don't think I could change it. Oh, jeez. Well, good. Okay. Well, as it was late there, does anybody else have anything they want to add or any questions? Lana, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you putting together slides and teaching us that we need to be um, mentally decluttered <laughs> and literally decluttered. Um, and yeah, I appreciate you taking the time and, and doing this for us. And uh, we need some calls signed up. So if you have not hosted a call or not hosted a call in a while, um, we have a bunch of slots open up um, for the next few weeks. So jump. there's a document and I think in every team page, there's the Google Drive document that you can sign up for a call. Um, and it doesn't have to be like a whole slideshow thing. It could just be you sharing something um with us so jump on step out of your comfort zone and host a team call um so that's all i have for you guys have a great night and we'll talk to you guys later thanks lana thanks everybody